What's going on everybody? Hit pause here with a UE4 tutorial on the master pose component. The master pose component, what is it? Well, basically what it is is it is a way for you to get multiple meshes uh, in sync with the same skeleton. Uh, this is especially useful and I think probably most used for uh, characters that have uh, the ability to swap their clothing out or their body parts. Okay, this isn't for um, items that get attached to the character, such as like a hat, because a hat would technically can just be a skeletal mesh that is socketed to, say, the head bone, and it will follow just fine. But if it, it's a hood that also needs to be able to turn and bend with his shoulders and his head and things like that, uh, becomes a very different story. Uh, gloves on his hand that need to have the fingers animated as well cannot just be socketed to his hand because it'll just be a mesh that's stuck there and it won't do us any good. So I'm going to show you guys how you get everything perfectly synced and the answer is the master pose component. It's very simple but what we're going to do first is we're going to bring in the character here and we're going to give him some armor. So to do that we go asset actions export Okay, and I'm just going to overwrite. We'll hit, hit yes here. Okay, and then once that's done, if we come here to max and we check our unit setup just in case, I believe we should be one centimeter, but I'm going to leave this as is, okay, because it's going to import actually at whatever size it's uh, it actually is. So I, I have this import file here. I'm going to bring this guy in. I'm just going to hit okay. And we're going to have to do a little bit of management on him because it always comes in with something weird. Um, so here he is. Uh, you can see, number one, he's been triangulated. We don't care about that. Uh, number two is that um, if I were to take his root object here, you can see that it's actually not scaled to 100%. It's this SK mannequin dummy. If we go to, in 2015, if we go to manage layers, there's actually no way to display the children properly here. Um, these all come in one long straight list where everything's lined up. We actually need to hit H here, and that will actually show the children in their hierarchy. And you'll notice that the root is actually attached to another object called the SK underscore mannequin. That's a dummy object. Okay, so what we actually need to do is we need to delete this. And if we don't, I'm just going to hit Control A, and I'm going to hit Export, and just call that new hit save we don't delete that dummy object what's going to happen eels it's gonna to fail to import boom okay I won't change anything just hit import and it says fail to import and it's gonna say multiple roots found and a duplicate bone name so that extra dummy object in there needs to come out okay and it's real simple to get it all you got to do is just click on any one of these, hold page up until it goes all the way up, and we can delete it. Okay, now the other problem is that the root, let's go page up again once we get the root. If I hit R here, the root is scaled down, and that's not good. So we need to scale that back up. Okay, that puts him back at normal size. All right, but the other problem is now that I've done that, the mesh has gone back to scaling down. And if I disable the skin modifier, the mesh is wee tiny. So if I import this now, he's going to be wee tiny. So I need to fix this. The way to fix it is to save the skin weights. I'll just use this test skin weights here and get rid of them. That's going to dump him down. But notice that when I deleted it, he shrank. Well, I don't want that. I actually want to collapse too. Okay? And then what I want to do is I want to reset his X form. Okay, and then collapse that. So now he's at 100% at the right size, the same size as the skeleton. All we got to do is put the skin modifier back on. So we're going to add the bones. Let's make sure select children's on, and it is. And we hit select, and that's going to add them all. And then we reload the skin weight table and just match by name. And as long as everything is OK, then there's nothing says blank, we should be able to hit OK. OK, and now we can bring him in entirely new uh, we'll say yes even though it failed it still registered it and there's a couple of things I do not want to have happen 
I do not want to create a physics asset. Okay, and I actually want to use the same skeleton because it is the same skeleton. Okay, so I'm going to pick the mannequin skeleton and we're going to hit import. Okay, it's saying oh, there's some stuff missing from the bind pose. We don't really give a shit, but if we place him right next to the other guy, you can see that we are now at the same size. Okay, and he's in the master, or he's in, you know, the T pose there. Okay, so what we want to do now is now that we've got him importing and exporting at the right size because we fixed the scale and we got rid of the extra dummy dummy root node and we collapsed this and rescaled it and put it back on there everything is uniform now we're good to go so what I want to do is I want to give him some armor and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him like a left glove and a right leg piece okay so I'm gonna just click him and I'm gonna clone him out because I want to be able to do uh, a little bit m uh, a few things to him and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll say pick about there okay and then we'll get rid of all of that stuff and let's just try to make it nice and even around so we get one ring segment is where it ends so it's gonna add that stuff there okay so that'll be his glove and this glove obviously cannot just be socketed to anything okay it's gonna have to bend here at the right place the wrist is gonna have to bend at the right place and the fingers are gonna have to still bend so we're gonna delete this Okay, that's the glove, and what I'm going to do, just so it becomes totally obvious, is I'm going to push this just a little bit away from the surface so that it doesn't become coplanar with the parts that are there. Now I know that if I go too far it's going to get really breaky, but I just want it to be non-coplanar. Okay, so that's his left arm, left glove, okay, we can go ahead and collapse that and I'm gonna clone him again and we'll call this right leg okay I'm gonna do the same thing okay control I delete that and we hit it with the push very slightly okay so now we have a glove and we have a leg piece so let's export those separately so we're gonna hit control a get rid of the body get rid of the leg piece and this is just gonna be the left glove left arm glove okay we'll export and I'll call this left glove okay hit control a get rid of the glove and the mesh so we only have this again we need all of the bones in our selection here so that's why I did control a you notice I have 69 objects there's actually 68 bones okay and we'll call this right leg like so okay then we come back here and let's go ahead and refresh this there we go right leg left glove let's bring them in okay now we want to use the same skeleton we don't want a physics asset we don't want the materials let's just hit import all okay it's fine that it came up with some errors as you can see here there's the left glove. Now if I look at his skeleton, this is very important, the entire skeleton is there. Now this is how it's going to be if you're going to be creating capes or like shells or, or new torsos or new arms or new legs or anything like that. Okay, it should look like this when you look at the main piece. All right. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is more reliable than the other. Uh, one of them, in fact, I think is may or may not be broken in, uh, or may have been fixed uh, some some time ago, like 4.7 or 4.8 may have fixed the reason that we needed this. But let's go ahead now and open up this guy, and let's get these side items on him. So if we go to the viewport, we can see we have our homes here, and he's looking just fine. And what we want to do is we want to add another skeletal mesh and that's going to be the left glove and you can see that it is way up here so what we want to do is we want to make the parent of that be the original mesh that way we can reset its position and rotation and it is now in the same which should be zero 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 well it actually should be zero 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 based on this guy and that's what we want we want it to line up okay let's get our leg and we'll bring that, might as well bring that in too and we'll add another skeletal mesh component and that'll be his leg and we'll do the same thing, we'll just root him to the mesh and reset his position and rotation 
And you can see these meshes are now here, but they're not following anything. Now, I'll show you guys the first way to do it. What you can do is you can browse to your animation blueprint, and then you can simply assign that there. And they seem to line up just fine. Okay. The problem is, is that what's there's two there's two problems with this that I think is one I'm pretty sure I'm correct. The other one I don't think I am correct. The one I don't think I am correct on is that I think that these two calling the animation blueprint are forcing the animation blueprint to run their code again. I can't be certain but this is my guess. I believe that the way it works is this guy meshes here, says, hey, I have an animation blueprint, let's go run the code, okay, now come back and update. Okay, now let's go back, run the code, come back and update. And this one, I think this one's doing the same thing, and I think this one is now doing the same thing. Um, and I do know that, um, I'll tell you guys a little story, I was helping a friend get this working on his character, and what he was running into was a problem of the pieces going out of sync with the main mesh. His hair was shifting away from his head a little bit because um, the hair also had like ponytail bones in animation. Um, his different, uh, he, he had a separated torso from the arms and the legs and we could see up close that the legs were shifting away in and out from the torso location and it wasn't lining up cleanly in game. Now keeping in mind his game had a lot more going on in it than this. There's nothing in here. His game had gameplay, levels, AI, everything. It was all this stuff was going on, and these things were going out of sync. Now, so I think that the reason that this is working fine is just because there isn't too much being processed. But I cannot tell you for certain whether or not it's out of sync. I'm trying to check this distance right here, how far it's away, and it kind of feels like it's shifting a little bit, just to my eyes. But I'm probably incorrect. However, I, so the second method is called the master pose component. And in the case of my friend, when we were doing those experiments, when his game was heavy and he had a lot of pieces, the master pose component fixed it to 100% perfectly in sync. It literally solved the problem entirely. So while we don't see a problem here, we may have one. And if we were to continue in this fashion down the road, I believe we will get the problem will get worse and worse and worse. If we use the master pose component, that won't happen. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to clear the animation blueprint. And we are going to instead grab these two guys here, OK? including the mesh here. So we've got the glove and the right leg, and we've also got our original mesh. And what we're going to do is drag off of one of the children here, and we're going to say set master pose component, and the new master bone component is going to be red from this mesh. So the, what's going to happen is whatever this guy's skeleton's doing, it's just going to take that skeleton information and transfer it directly to this guy's skeleton because they share a skeleton. Now cool thing is, is you can hook up more than one object, and we do need this to actually be ran, so we'll do it on begin play. So when we compile this, you'll notice that when the character is placed, it's not updated. But when we play, okay, it's updated. And you can see that the animation is following along perfectly. And if I run, you can also see that he makes a fist. So the the fingers are working too. See that? So it is now clean. And it, like I said, no matter what happens in the game, no matter how heavy the game gets, because we're doing a straight transfer of the skeletal positions information, that master pose, these things aren't running any extra real code on them, and they're updating perfectly 100%, and it should remain so even through bouts of crazy lag in your game or whatnot, or when things get really, really heavy. So that is what the master pose component does. It does, in fact, give you the ability to give them different armors and stuff like that. Anything that shares the full skeleton uh, should work just fine. Again, you do, when you export these objects, do want to have the full skeleton included, I believe. Uh, if you are missing some parts, I, I can't tell you whether or not it's going to work or not, but I do know that this does work. Okay and it works really good so this is how I would do it and I suggest you guys do the same thing if not you can try to put the um, 
animation blueprint to just affect these things but like I said I have seen it go out of sync in the past um, for sure and it was not a good thing to see it was really 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 golf sync and it seemed to get worse over time so while this one has the downside of it looking kind of weird while placed in the world keeping in mind that for the most part you never really have one placed in the world right because it's a character depending if it's a NPC or something uh, he will look weird in the editor uh, without this happening uh, you could probably tell this thing to use the um, third person animation blueprint okay tell it to and then on the event graph um, you could probably say set an instance here to be none I don't know if this actually works can you do that? let me try that okay so it still works there and if I place him now he still looks like he works but I'm undoing it right in the beginning I'm setting the anim instance class which by the way anim instance class is just another word for animation blueprint okay um, left glove and right leg okay so it still works using the master pose component but the one that I placed in the world, he also looks like he works so you could do that if you really wanted to I wouldn't think that it's necessarily worth doing but if I skip the master pose component I'm thinking that the animations are dead now yes see the animations are dead now because I have in fact these are told to do the third person blueprint so if I do nothing it'll work but like I said, this is an in it. Well, the left arm works anyway. Um, this is, an, you know, I, I think an, an inefficient method of doing it. Okay. So while it appears to work here just fine, uh, I prefer to use the master pose component. And in the case of somebody complaining that oh, it, I, it looks like shit when I place it in the editor and I can't work like this, you could tell it to use the animation blueprint just in the editor, and then when the game runs, you could tell it instead to uh, just get rid of that so it doesn't run it real time like like so so we set it to blank and we use the master pose so now it looks good no matter what we do looks good here okay looks and runs good here okay. so that's it hopefully this is helpful and informative this is how you do armor so uh, this is hip signing off thanks for watching